Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So for today's video, we're going to go ahead and help out one of you guys that has asked a question in one of my previous videos. So if you find this type of stuff useful and or you have any questions about this video we're about to make or any questions about any other Salesforce topics that you would probably want to see me address in the future, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below and maybe consider subscribing. I would greatly appreciate that. So let's jump into it. In my Salesforce Apex tutorial batch basics video, uh, Ann Peterson asked, rather left this comment right here and I guess we can kind of just read it. So she said, we are uploading data into Salesforce objects on a daily basis. Once loaded, we have to run a batch process for each. We use database.execute batch for each process and execute anonymous window. One day the systems will talk to each other, but for now this is a tedious manual process. I have therefore created a screen flow which determines if that particular process is ready to run. And if so, user can toggle to enable each one they wish to run and it calls the apex method to run the command. This, this works well. However, I have wrapped it in a lightning component so I can make it accessible in global actions. It works there, but the global action actions window doesn't close and I needed to prevent running it again. I tried using a command I found online but it didn't do anything. I've not really worked with LC before so okay. Basically you just want to be able to close that global action once you're done. It sounds like where you're what you're trying to get at. Yeah, and I think we can make that happen. So very quickly, before we get started, just a quick dis disclaimer that I kind of like to give in pretty much every single one of my videos. As you may or may not know, I am a developer, yes, but I am not a super senior developer that just happens to know everything there is to know about Salesforce. I basically know enough and also know how to Google enough to kind of get work done. So, you know, take that for what it is. Don't think for a second that I know that I have like the best solution ever, but I think we can kind of get something done for you right here. So on, on that same note, I also want to preface this by saying that I kind of did Google around and I found some some answers. Uh, notable is from this person's uh, blog right here, which kind of got me up and running and, you know, getting that global action and the lightning component set up so that we can kind of focus on that specific question of how to close it uh, once we're done uh, doing our thing. So big thanks to this person and also on this Salesforce uh, Stack Exchange, uh, essentially showing us how to actually close it as well. And as always, the Salesforce developer guide, which kind of also did help out a little bit. So I will leave all these resources linked down in the description box below. If you feel, you know, feel free to take a look at it. If you don't want to watch me go through this entire video to, to do so but yeah okay so let's kind of get into it i think we'll kind of start at the very beginning we'll we're basically going to simulate Anne's environment we're going to create a quote-unquote batch class we'll create the screen flow the lightning component the global action and then we'll put it on our publisher layout that way we can basically do the whole thing now very importantly i assume you're talking about aura component is what you made when you when you said you not really worked with, with lc before lightning components um now if this is a lightning web component you're talking about. I'm pretty sure this just recently became possible as well. Uh, so if you're working with Lightning Web component and not Lightning component or Aura components, uh, let me know so I can make that separate video as well. Um, but I think I've rambled, rambled on long enough. So let's kind of get into it right here in my trailhead org. Let's go ahead and go into our uh, setup. And once we are in here, or actually, let's go ahead and make the batch class first. I'm going to jump into my Visual Studio code, but feel free to just use the developer console or whatever else you might be using, like IntelliJ or something. So in here, I'm going to go ahead and create an apex class. So we'll just run the command, create apex class. And since I'm kind of lazy and you know, the whole purpose of the video is to kind of show how to invoke a flow from a global action and be able to close it after we're done. Um, I'm not really going to go ahead and create an actual batch class. We'll just create a fake uh, class to that, that kind of does something for us. So I will call this uh, fake batch class or I just put, yeah, fake batch. That should be fine. Let's create it in here. And I will close this up. And I think what I'm going to do is we'll create a method. We'll call it uh, public static void. And just so you're aware, I'm creating this class and we'll make it invocable. That way we can call it from our, our screen flow. Uh, that's kind of what we're getting at. Since in Anne's case, it looks like she's calling that apex method that has the batch logic from her flow. We'll kind of simulate that as well. And in this case, we'll just call this execute fake batch like so and in here we're just going to do a debug it doesn't really matter we're not really going to do much with it and we'll just say executed fake batch that is fine one thing to note is we need to have the invocable annotation and in here let's go ahead and give it a label just so it's a bit easier a bit more easy to identify so we'll say execute fake batch and we'll also give it a description and we'll say something like pretend this is a fake batch. 
I don't know, just something simple like that. And it looks like we made some mistakes. What did we do here? Uh, it is single quotes, not double quotes. That's my mistake. So let's go ahead and fix that right there. All right, and I think that's pretty much all we need to do. So I'll go ahead and save this and deploy this to my org. So we have that in the background. Uh, next thing we should probably do is now go ahead and create the screen flow and then reference this method in this class. So let's go ahead and jump back into our org and the setup. We're going to go into flows and then we'll just hit a uh, new flow in here. We're going to create a screen flow and let's go ahead and click, click, click this plus. We'll create a screen uh, right here. We will uh, just call this like process records or something. It doesn't really matter. So we'll do that. For these buttons, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of remove the button. So we're going to, we're going to hide the previous button. Uh, we'll hide the pause button for the finish button. Let's go ahead and call this like process records or something. Again, we're not actually processing any records. This is kind of just simulating her environment so we can kind of get to the whole point of this. And in here, just so we, this doesn't look so bad, we can add a text and we'll also add like a checkbox or something. Or actually, uh, here, let me do this real quick. So we'll say... Uh, pretend this is a list of records that is ready for processing. That's fine. Okay, uh, we'll leave everything as is right there. And now let's go ahead and add that checkbox on the bottom. This we'll call process records. Yeah, just something like pretend. This processes records, or rather pretend this checks records for processing. Again, it doesn't really matter. It was, it was, this is not really doing anything. It's just kind of, again, to pretend we have that same environment that Anne does. All right, once we have all of this, we can go ahead and close this out. Uh, let's go ahead and add a decision. Again, a lot of this is kind of unnecessary, but it's fine. We will call this should process records. I don't really know what to call it. It's fine. For the yes, we will basically say if the checkbox is true, then kind of go ahead and quote unquote process our records. The default will be no. That's fine all right so now we have our two different paths for the yes let's go ahead and call an action uh we'll do a type and in here i think it's called like fake batch oh, let's go to apex actions right there and there's our execute fake batch um invocable method we'll go ahead and attach that right there oh let me give it a name so we'll say i don't know like execute batch close this out okay so basically if the user checks that box and then hits the process records button it will just fire that apex method kind of in the same way that ands batch is probably being called up uh, if else just end the flow okay that's fine i think let's go ahead and hit save on this and we will call this process records in batch uh, i don't really have a good brain for naming stuff right now i'm kind of tired but i think this is fine we'll go ahead and hit save we'll go ahead and activate it once we are done with that let's go ahead and exit from here we now need to create our aura component and again i'm going to go ahead and jump back into visual studio code to do this but you can do this in developer console or any other ide that works for you uh, let's go ahead and hit and run our create aura component uh, command right here and in here i'm gonna call this i don't know like process records batch or something it doesn't really matter go ahead and create it once we are here we now have our basically empty scaffold of our aura project or aura components so we're gonna need the process records batch and the the controller the javascript controller i think that's all we need so for here and here's kind of like the the important bits what we need to do is implement a few interfaces so we'll go ahead and implement yeah we need to implement a few and i'm actually i'm actually just gonna kind of copy and paste them because there's too many to write them we'll go ahead and and paste them here so we're, we're implementing available for all page types available for record home has record id and landing quick action uh, if you're fun if you're wondering where i found these from basically just go back to the or rather it's a few things i'm kind of copying uh the ones she has down here somewhere um a little bit different but i, I don't think it matters that much and also just by kind of going through all this documentation um, i'm not the biggest expert in aura i actually have very little experience with aura because i wasn't even in the salesforce ecosystem back then and once i did get into salesforce it was kind of like lightning web components is a new thing but i i know just enough to kind of do what we need to do here. But anyways, if you're wondering about stuff, the Lightning Aura Components Developer Guide isn't half bad. It, it's, it, it works enough. So anyways, uh, once we have that defined, we can kind of create our kind of like the HTML scaffold, whatever you want to call it, that will eventually display our flow. To do so, I'm going to go ahead and copy some more code and then we can kind of talk about it for a bit. 
it is these two lines right here. We have our aura handler and then we have the lightning flow. This is what essentially will eventually display our flow. Uh, we're just giving it an ID of flow data and then we're going to give it an on status change which when uh, when it fires, it will call this method in our controller, which will define in a few seconds. But I'm going to go ahead and hit save on that. And then now we can jump into our controller. And again, I, I'm not kind of I'm really not like going too deep into our components. One, because I'm not the biggest expert Two, I probably maybe not, but maybe I'll make more videos in the future going specifically into aura components. Uh, I kind of have strayed away from it because Lightning Web Components is kind of a new thing and I haven't worked in any orgs that or environments that have Aura Components. But, you know, you guys let me know if you guys want to see that type of video. Feel free to comment down below and I'll kind of work on making that happen eventually. So anyways, in our process records batch controller, JavaScript controller, now what we need to do is basically in the uh, right here, uh, we're going to uh, let's just kind of get rid of this real quick. We'll start from the beginning. Uh, we're going to have an init function so basically on initialization we're going to receive a component and it's going to do some stuff so we're going to basically we're going to find the basically uh this right here because we want to display something to it so we're going to say var flow is equal to component dot find and basically we're going to find the thing that says flow data uh, again this being this right here so once we have a reference to what essentially becomes html we, we can do something with it so once we have access to that element uh, we can do what's called flow dot start flow and what we want to do with that is we want to pass in the API name of our actual screen flow so let's go ahead and go back to our org in our flows here we have the flow API name. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of open up the details and versions so we can see the full thing. Right here, we have the flow API name. I'm going to kind of just kind of copy this and then paste this in here, basically telling our R component that we want it to display this flow right here. OK, once we have that, let's let's hit save and then now let's just kind of deploy this to our org and see kind of what we get. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and deploy this to our org. Once it is there, we can kind of now work on, you know, creating a global action and then putting it in a publisher layout to see kind of what we get. So back in our setup, let's go to global actions and in here let's create a new action and we're going to do a lightning component and we're going to say this is or since i've already done this before i have a few names in this case we called our our component process records batch so that is what we want to do it's right there let's give this a height of like 500 pixels or 600 pixels that doesn't really matter this is basically the size of that global actions box that is going to display Center type, just leave it as is, and we will call this process records batch or so, and we'll leave everything else as is. So we'll hit save right here. And once that is created, let's go back to our setup, go to publisher layouts. And since I only have this one global layout, I'm going to go ahead and edit it. And in here, you can see I have this process records one, which is the one I was kind of testing before I made this whole video. Uh, but in our case, let's go ahead and click on mobile and lightning actions and basically just drag down the one that the aura component that we just deployed to our org, which is this one. I'll go ahead and hit save. Once that it's done, we can go back to our home and let's kind of just refresh it. I'm going to refresh it a few times to make sure nothing is cached. Uh, but now when we click on this little plus icon, we should see here process records and I'm pretty sure that says batch. There we go. So if I click on this. We now have this right here and it looks like we got an error. So it says unable to find action handle st status change. And that is completely my fault. Um, I was trying to show you guys what what is the default behavior without, you know, doing the fix that Anne is looking for because I didn't define essentially what it's complaining about is this on status change right here. There's nothing defined, so, you know, it can't really do anything. So I guess kind of to fix this for a bit without really showing you guys the full solution yet is we'll just de define that that method so we'll say handle status change it is a function uh, most functions can expect to receive a component and an event and in here we can kind of go ahead and do something for now we'll just leave it blank so basically just enough to where it doesn't complain let's go ahead and deploy source to org one more time all right once that is done let's go ahead and go back here i'm going to go ahead and refresh the page and we can see that the error is gone because now we have defined that that method in our controller okay 
So now let's say, oh, I guess I made this an input text. I meant to make it an output text, but again, doesn't matter. Anyway, so let's pretend, um, you know, we check this box, which means that fake batch method should fire and we hit the process records and it does its thing in the background. And now once it's done, you, you might have seen that it did like a little loading spinner and it refreshed, bring it new back to the initial page or the initial Flow, which is the same page and now we or and wants this basically once we click this the batch should fire in the background but this page should be closed now i kind of already outed myself about what the fix was so let's kind of just go ahead and implement it so in our handle status change right here we have to do something right and basically what we're doing is we're going we're going to uh, check for the the status of that form so we're going to go to we're going to get the event and we're going to get a param that param is called status um, and, and essentially the way to think about it is, you know, whenever that flow or whenever that global action appears, you know, it will have a few, well, there will be a few statuses throughout the lifetime of that global action is kind of the way to think about it. When you first click on that, the process records batch thing and it, and the global action page kind of opens up at you, that status would be something like started. And then when you click on a button, you know, the status might change to something else. So essentially what we're trying to do, we're just trying to grab that status and we're going to do a comparison. So I'm going to say if it's equal to this thing called the finished, which is the event when, you know, you clicked on that button and we were done, um, then we want to basically just close that, that page or that global action. And the way to do so is by putting this little funky little, little thing right here. It is dollar sign a gets this method right here um, from this namespace or whatever and just hit fire on it. And basically that will just close it for you. Again, I will link down the stack exchange where I found these answers and all the other documentation, but that's essentially how you'd, how you get this thing done. So we can hit save right here and we should now be able to have this on status change thing fire. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. And when the handle, handle status change fires if the event is finished which indicates that our flow is done and it's about to return back to its initial uh, screen then we can just fire this close quick action method and that should be it for us so i'm going to go ahead and deploy source to org one more time and very quickly while this is deploying i will also leave down a probably github gist or gist how we pronounce that of all this code in case you guys don't want to watch the rest of the video so feel free to grab that okay once it's done deploying let's go ahead and go back to our home i'm going to refresh this a few times to make sure that nothing gets cached because i did have that issue a few times all right so let's try it one more time process records right here. We're going to check this box right here and we're going to process records and it looks like it's not working. So I'm going to refresh my page a few times and maybe change tabs a few times here just to make sure that nothing gets, gets cached because I did have this issue a few times where I thought that it, things weren't working, but it turns out that my browser was just caching things. So let's try it one more time. I'm going to hit this to make sure that our apex method is also called process records right here. And you see, once that is done, it, the page, the little quick actions, global actions, whatever you want to call it, is completely gone. So I think, and um, that is basically what you needed. I hope you found this useful. One final thing, anybody else that's watching this that has much more experience than me, you know, feel free to comment down below if, you know, if this is like the most optimal solution or if there's anything better out there, I would really like to know. But again, one more time, if you guys found this useful, feel free to subscribe, like, comment, share, whatever you guys want to do, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.